Hey, I'm Nate with Cena, and today we're checking out the Typo keyboard for the iPhone 6. Now this is a keyboard case that pairs with your iPhone 6, and it aims to offer you a physical keyboard to free up some real estate on your screen. Now I'm not entirely convinced that the drawbacks are worth the $99 you'll pay for this case. It's available for pre-order. But if you really need a physical keyboard and you really want an iPhone, well, here's an option. There isn't all that much to the device. You'll slide your phone into the base and then slide the other end of the case on top to lock it in. It connects via Bluetooth and pairing is easy. Just hold down this Bluetooth key for a few seconds after you've activated Bluetooth on your phone. And then you're set, just start typing. The battery lasts for seven to 10 days, depending on how much you use it, and charges via a convenient little micro USB port here on the side. You can still charge your phone and plug your headphones in, and the keyboard is also backlit, which is really convenient. But the keyboard doesn't feel all that great. It's sturdy enough once you've tucked the iPhone in, but the keys are all rather cramped together, and the thinness means they're relatively shallow, so until you're used to the feeling, expect a lot of typos. But the more important problem here is that the iPhone has come a long way. To start, the iPhone 6 is a lot bigger. Slap a keyboard onto the bottom, and that big phone gets even taller. It does offer more screen real estate since the virtual keyboard no longer pops up on the screen, but you'll lose out on things like emoji or spelling suggestions. Not that big a deal. But the keyboard also blocks the home button. There's a shortcut that replaces it so you can still bug Siri when you need to, but it obviously blocks support for Touch ID. That right there makes it an automatic deal breaker for me. Now if you don't really care about Touch ID and are tired of hammering out messages on your screen, then you're going to do well here. But paying a hundred bucks to make a big phone even bigger and losing a key feature doesn't seem worth the trade-off to me. Be sure to read my full review on CNET. I'm Nate Ralph. Thanks for watching.